are so excited to welcome you, those of you who join us online today, those who join in building today. We are indeed a hybrid community uh, during this, uh, uh, this time where things are getting better in the US, though it still is a global pandemic, we have leaned into the hybrid space. So we thank God for the gift of technology that allow us to gather on uh, this first Sunday in May, uh, which we celebrate our love feast. So if you are at home, you might want to grab a cup of coffee, uh, bread or beverage of choice. If you're here in the sanctuary, you still have time, you can grab a coffee, tea from the Williams Parlor or let, grab some water. Uh, next month in June, we will resume in-person communion. Um, so we give thanks to, to God for that. Uh, we have been, we thank you for your patience. Uh, we have been measured in our relaunching and it now feels ready to do so in a way that's still uh, COVID safe. Uh, and friendly as we all have different levels of risk tolerance. Uh, today is a good day. We are alive. We are glad to be in the service. Yeah, Barbara Randolph has the spirit. We are alive. She just immediately started putting her hands together. Um, and so we take the lead from those uh, who have uh, led us in the past and lead us even now. Uh, we are excited today, a uh, beloved union, that on this first Sunday of May, as we'll see in the opening litany in just a moment, uh, many things converge, many things converge. It is the third Sunday of Easter. We make it a point that Easter um, is a season, not just a day. We celebrated Resurrection Sunday, but Resurrection Sunday on April 17th, it launched us into the season of Easter Tide, which extends through Pentecost, which is to say, uh, because Christ arose, we continue to rise and, and soar to higher heights and claim life uh, because there are so many around us that don't know the fullness of the abundant life that Jesus promised. So we lean into the presence of the abundant life. Today on this first Sunday of, of May, we also celebrate in the United Methodist Church uh, what is known as Native American Awareness Ministries Sunday. Um, as we recognize, of course, that we are on land that has been, uh, that was taken from indigenous people, uh, but we celebrate uh, that, that those who trace their lineage uh, to those First Nations are still among us and thriving ministries, and we want to honor and to celebrate as we live into the spirit of love and liberation in this place. So we are now uh, celebrating one of those special Sundays, Native American Ministries, and we're so excited that uh, Todd Warfield, uh, you know him from the tech side, He's also has been a licensed local pastor in the United Methodist Church, and he has a message for us, and he'll tell his own story and connection, but as we lean into celebration of Native American Ministries Sunday, we welcome Todd Warfield to the pulpit today, so bless God. And I see, I almost forgot, we've got the chat going up. Yes, go Todd, indeed. Uh, if you haven't already, put who you are, if you're calling in from online, Put who you are, where you're calling in from. It gives a sense of this hybrid uh, space. Those who are gathered with me in the physical sanctuary are able to see the chat live and interact. Um, and we continue to say that wherever you are, sanctuary is. So, beloved, as we gather on this Sunday with joy, the praise team is gonna sing joy in just a moment. We also uh, send prayers, uh, continued prayers to you, uh, Bertha Herring Daniel. Uh, we know that uh, you lost one of your beloved family members, your sister, uh, Karen K. Herring, a couple of weeks ago. She was funeralized just after Easter. Uh, so the spirit of joy, the spirit of family, the spirit of love might uh, continue to unfold uh, the Herring family during uh, this time. If there's other prayer concerns that you have, you might use the chat to, to lift those up as well as we usher into this space, that which is among us on this day. Let's go ahead and put the litany on the screen as we call ourselves uh, to worship. Hear these words. On 
This Sunday, May 1st, we recognize both the beginning and the continuation of many different seasons. And in doing so, we find that just like the spring that comes after every single harsh and cold winter, the stories that we must tell about who we are to and for one another deserve to be told again and again as well. And so on this day, we recognize the beginning of Asian American and Pacific Islander Month. We recognize that something like race and culture, it's not a black and white binary, it's a spectrum. It's a kaleidoscope, a diversity of stories and lives and histories to be uplifted and celebrated. We recognize the nearly 30 years it has been since the brutal assault against Rodney King at the hands of the LA police and the subsequent aftermath. We recognize that history repeats itself when empire rears its ugly head, playing a god who values profits over people, power over compassion. We recognize Easter tide, that 50 day period spanning from Easter to Pentecost in which we talk back to those powers of empire, knowing that the spirit of God takes those state sanctioned crosses meant to intimidate black, brown, Asian, indigenous, and so many more lives and transforms them into that which cannot ever kill the spirit of God within us. We recognize Eid, which marks the end of Ramadan for our Muslim siblings. And in doing so, we recognize that Christianity does not have a monopoly on moral goodness and that justice and liberation cannot happen in silos, but instead at the moment, we celebrate those who also pursue righteousness. And finally, we recognize that today is Native American Ministries Sunday. Knowing that buried underneath each history we tell is always another waiting to be unearthed. We recognize that before Massachusetts was a state name, it was a people. That sacred lands were trampled upon in the name of a Jesus whom we at Union do not know and do not wish to know. And so this morning, we turn to a God of many stories in many seasons, and we ask once again for a different story to be told among us today, because we say, God, we know that you are the one who makes all things new. You are the one who knows us and knows our stories. We ask that if there is a name that be lifted up in this place, it be the name of Jesus Christ, the one who came not to dominate, not to colonize, not to cover up the wounds of the past, but to save us from the very powers that makes them so. And so as we worship this morning, as we sing on this day, as we praise and preach and pray together, let us be the people that God has called okay. us to be. If you know this to be true this morning, let all God's people say amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Good morning, Union. Good morning, y'all. How many are here to lift his name up? How many? I, well, I guess, oh, yeah, just me? Yeah, man. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, if you're ready to lift God's name up, if he's been good to you, why don't you stand to your feet and worship with us? I will lift up your name. I will lift up your name. Your name. I am. 
seated in the presence of the God who loves us and frees us. The God that says to us, though we be broken, sometimes in body and spirit, the God who broke bread with his disciples, his first followers, and their eyes were opened, our eyes are opened to declare that there's beauty and wholeness and acceptance and embrace. What a gift of love. And it's the joy of the Lord that gives us strength from day to day. For those of you who are joining online, I invite you just to type in the chat, joy. Three letters, one word. Those of you who are in the sanctuary, if you have that strength that is given by the one who is our joy, just give God a wave offering. We gather in this place on this first Sunday in May. We celebrate after now two years of not being able to break bread in Holy Communion. We celebrate this final love feast in this season, where we've used it as a substitute, a, a sacramental substitute for a sacrament that we hungered for and yearned for. So I invite you on this day, 
as I offer framing and there'll be a prayer printed on the screen in just a moment. Uh, you might be at home or here in the sanctuary just to close your eyes and to look back, to remember, and to give thanks that the seasons are turning and that our joy springs forth. Keep them closed for as long as or as short as you want. As you hear these words, on this first Sunday of May, we observe Native American Ministry Sunday, and we take time to remember and honor the histories of indigenous peoples of this land. Some of us gather in the sanctuary of our homes, others of us gather in this sanctuary building on Columbus Avenue, named after the very man who symbolizes the colonization and genocide of Native peoples. We acknowledge that this building resides on the ancestral and unceded lands of the Massachusetts people whose name was appropriated by the Commonwealth. And so on this Sunday, we humbly set our love feast table knowing the soil on which we stand is ground taken, not owned, shared, not possessed. And still we celebrate that to be in communion with one another bound by the intimate and justice seeking Holy Spirit it is a testament to what our God can do against the powers of colonialism. So we turn to this love feast this morning and we gather in a spirit of resistance and repentance and celebration because God is surely doing a new thing among us. This meal is not a formal sacrament like Holy Communion, which we will resume next month, but still it is sacramental, which is to say it is full of holiness and wonder. And this love feast, it connects us. Even as we gather around table metaphorically today, it connects us to one another in person and online, to Christians across time and space who face tribulations and obstacles that prevented them from celebrating Holy Communion as the body of Christ. And so in this historic ritual, we are joining in the faith of our ancestors. So you are invited, beloved, to this table of grace. And we dine together as we feast on the word. And we pray. Let's pray together. God of love, we thank you for making a way where there is no way. We thank you for tables, for this table. In a world struggling to breathe under the burdens of violence, injustice, and oppression, help us to move with radical compassion, to draw our neighbors near, to set the table once again, and to proclaim finally that all who hunger and thirst might come and know the God of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There is a name I love to sing. I love to sing of it. Sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Let's make this our refrain. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. again. Oh, how I love Jesus. 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 Because he first loved me. Amen. 
So beloved, on this Sunday, two things before we turn to the reading of the scripture. Um, that, that we are joined today, we're talking about extending tables. We are joined today by our new organizer through the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization. We're happy to have with us in the Columbus Avenue Sanctuary, uh, Micaiah Healy. Yes, give it up for Micaiah. Part of our work of justice and advocacy of extending the table, uh, particularly on issues as we've named for our platform here at Union around housing, equal access to uh, health care, particularly mental health, uh, and equity uh, in, in, in income. Uh, one of the things that uh, the, our partnership with Greater Boston Interfaith Organization allows us to do is to join together and because, don't you know that uh, a fist is mightier than a finger? so that there's collective power when we come uh, together. So we are definitely excited. I see uh, folks saying welcome. Go ahead, folks in the chat, say welcome, 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 as we continue to lead forward in uh, this good work. And then finally, today is Minister Abby's last Sunday among us as our student uh, minister. She comes to read uh, the scriptures, uh, but and she'll say a word to us as the semester at Boston University comes to a close, and her supervisor, Pastor Nikki, uh, will uh, uh, help us to send her forth at the closing of service. But as she uh, mounts the pulpit uh, to minister the word to us as recorded in the scriptures, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge that, as indeed, Reverend Ellen Casey, you are correct. We will miss you, Minister Abby. Uh, and we pray God's blessing upon your future uh, ministry. Amen? So hear the words of Scripture. Good morning, Union. It is good to be with you this morning, and I uh, just invite you to take a deep breath, to just uh, breathe all of this in this love, this welcome, this family that we find ourselves uh, with this morning. Receive with joy. These words from the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. Then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne, and when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. Then I looked. And I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands and thousands singing with full voice, worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing. To the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. 
and the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of God spoken for us, the word of God living among us. Thanks be to God. Indeed, thanks be to God. Indeed, we are singing a new song. And Pamela, as you uh, play uh, Jesus Loves the Little Children, it is now time uh, for children ages 3 to 12. You're invited to head back to the uh, Williams Parlor for Kids Sunday School. It was such a great thing uh, to come in today and greet uh, in person, uh, some of the little ones who we've seen online. So it is now time for Kids Sunday School. And also our young people are invited for Kids Sunday School online as well. And we'll go ahead and, yeah, it's already in the chat. So we have an in-person and an online Zoom for our young people as they head to the Williams Parlor for some Sunday School. Jesus loves the children of the world. And before we turn to our hymn of preparation and then to the preach word, uh, let me just tell you briefly about one in our midst who has been a true gift, who is a true gift. His name is Todd Warfield. Now, we didn't just walk into this space called Union with cameras and televisions and Wi-Fi. It didn't just like plop out of the sky as a miracle, even though miracles do happen. And in fact, miracles do happen by sending people who do miraculous things among us, that we become the hands and feet of the Holy One. And Todd is an extraordinary uh, person of God who you should know also has been a licensed local pastor serving a congregation in the United Methodist Church in the New England Conference. But he came to us all, first online uh, a couple of years ago and we got to know him. And then he started you know, reaching out and, and saying that he had some gifts and some skills that he wanted to share because gifts are for giving, gifts are for sharing. And, and Todd basically wired this whole Sanctuary, like single-handedly, set up the Wi-Fi, set up the cameras, uh, set up the network, all the things. Yeah, Scott. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, somebody type in the chat. Go, Todd. And not one explanation. I need at least three explanations. There you go, Justin. Justin gave us like five explanation points. Yes, beloved. Uh, so, so, so Todd has also been instrumental in leading uh, in the New England Conference, our Committee on Native American Ministries and Awareness. And, and as we were talking with him and Pastor Nikki and Pastor Kyle about uh, this opportunity on this Sunday, uh, we asked Todd to preach, and he said yes. Uh, so we give thanks. We're going to celebrate uh, Todd and, and Cyrus Weaver for the, the Ministry of Technology, Robert Kelsey, all those who have worked countless hours behind the scenes to make possible this hybrid experience. But today, uh, we give thanks for Todd. So go ahead, those of you who are in the sanctuary, extend your hands to Todd. Keep saying, go Todd in the chat and say, preach, Todd, preach. The next voice that you'll hear after our hymn of preparation will be that of Todd Warfield. Come on, bless God for him. me. 
Will you pray with me? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, Creator God, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. In Revelation, John breaks open the reality of the Roman Empire. The purpose of Revelation, according to Barbara Rossing, is to reveal something, but not necessarily what you might be thinking. Revelation is often seen as that text about the end time, the apocalypse. The depictions in Revelation aren't necessarily what's to come, but rather identifying what is already happening. It can be likened to Toto pulling back the curtain in The Wizard of Oz to reveal the power of the wizard as a fraud. Revelation is pulling back the curtain on the power of Rome. The oppressive empire is not to be worshipped. Salvation is not found in politics or government, but in the relationship with God and God's creation. I might have to say that again. 
salvation is not found in politics or government, but in the relationship with God and God's creation. Now in this season of after Easter, we like the first century Christians are still trying to figure out what exactly happened. Jesus died and rose again. But we might be struggling to understand who Jesus really is, given this new identity, this new reality of resurrection and bodily absence. In some ways, life continues on as if it was before, but in some ways, life will never be the same. In today's reading, we get some help to see the true identity of the risen Christ. Even if the writer here has done a little bit of code switching, this revelation, this reading, highlights Jesus as that lamb, but also as a lion, victorious over death, seated on the throne and praised by all creation. Every creature. There is a lot of singing. Praise music sung by the largest choir ever assembled. The songs of hope that we hear in the reading are sung against the powers of this world. They are speaking freedom of new life, of liberation, which seems appropriate in Eastertide. These songs are capable of flipping the system, shocking the culture, and praising the God that is above material greed and power in this world. This praise and worship of God is our ultimate response to God's grace. Yeah. Recall the beginning of the passage that Abby just read for us, where the angel asks someone, anyone, to come and break open the scroll, peel back the seal, and no one stepped forward. And John of Patmos is written as He's weeping. That weeping can be considered a radical criticism of that status quo. The people are expecting this victorious lion to save them, but instead they receive a lamb. Surprise! <laughs> Jesus appears as a slain lamb and is here again showing us that true nature of the risen Christ, one that bridges the gap from heaven and earth. It is a paradoxical connection between the one who is crucified and the one who now reigns in heaven. Just like when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, Jesus entered the city, but not as expected. But this isn't just a passive Jesus we're talking about here. No. The juxtaposition of the lion and the lamb challenges our assumptions about the character of Jesus. Now, God is bringing us into a reconciled creation, while God is also with us in this present awfulness. A reconciled creation is one that is able to set aside our motivations to tear down one another in order to build each other up. When mass graves were found containing over 200 indigenous children's remains at a boarding school in Canloops, British Columbia last spring, reconciliation started when survivors of that school were able to discuss the abuse they suffered 
and the intergenerational trauma that it caused. Following the risen Christ means that we need to renounce the violence. And when we honor missing and murdered indigenous women and girls, that reconciliation can start to happen. When we start to address climate change and a sustainable future, we start to reconcile ourselves with creation. When we reduce our reliance on fossil fuels and disrupt the economy of disposable goods, we begin to reconcile ourselves with creation. And I would be remiss if I did not mention the work in Memphis of our own Justin Jay stopping a pipeline as a way that reconciles us to creation. For indigenous communities, this relationship with creation is not new. Shared responsibility to care for land and community, as well as the knowledge that all actions are future, they affect the future generations. These are core values that anchor Native American communities. These values keep Native American tribes and cultures strong today and help build a stronger and more resilient future for all. Now, Vine Deloria in God is Red explained that sacred places are the foundation of all other beliefs and practices because they represent the presence of the sacred in our lives. We are not larger than nature, and we have responsibilities by the rest of the natural role to transcend our own personal desires and wishes. Now, this relationship is known in the Lakota tri tradition as Miatke Oseyum, which roughly translates to all my relations or we are all connected. And some of us might know this better as kinship. All humans, all animals, all plants, all the waters, the soil, the stones, the mountains, the grasslands, the winds, the clouds, the storms, the sun and the moon, the stars and the planets are our relations and our relations to one another. We are connected to each other in multiple and vital ways. When one is in pain, all are harmed. Where there's justice for one, there's more justice for all. Native elders teach us that through traditional relations with all creation aren't just this collection of dusty ideas that are just on a shelf or historic words, but that they provide a system of knowledge that is applicable to the lives and struggles of people right here, right now, today. The history of Native America is part of our shared history. It is a living and evolving story of resistance, resilience, economic strength, cultural revitalization, visible in tri tribal nations, and all indigenous peoples. The story contains many Native American contributions from art and sciences to judicial and political systems. The story also has the painful history of wrongdoing and loss that parallels some of the same stories that we hear in our own African American community, languages that have been driven underground or to extinction, promises broken by the US government and justice system, demeaning personifications 
in sports and advertising and cultural appropriations. But I think we also need to acknowledge the intersections of that harm. Nikki Sanchez, a Native activist, invites us to push back against historic amnesia. Historic amnesia. A phenomenon whereby settlers, colonialists, choose not to recognize the genocidal role of colonialism. Back in February, the Cherokee Nation finally formally acknowledged that Cherokee freedmen, that is, black people that were once enslaved by Cherokee, now have the right to tribal citizenship. About 4,000 enslaved black people lived among the Cherokee by 1861. While the tribe abolished slavery in 1863, freedmen were often denied full tribal citizenship rights, even after a treaty was signed by the Cherokee after the Civil War. Now, after this formal acknowledgement, there are about 8,500 descendants of freedmen that are enrolled as citizens of the Cherokee Nation. Native communities continue today to organize and to resist the still existing colonial condition. Native Americans are rejuvenated language and culture, advancing laws and justice, and contributing to aspects of society. They collectively practice rituals, ceremonies, and celebrations nourishing holistic relationships, forging community cohesion for well-being, and taking care of Mother Earth as a sacred place. And in movements like what happened in Standing Rock a few years ago, Native Americans, particularly young people, are leading and building on thousands of years of accumulated knowledge to address important current issues. Native Americans' wisdom, values, historic experiences, and creative resilience are greatly needed to sustain tribal nations and to continue to care for our lands and our waters, our urban and rural communities, our country, and our planet. We can continue to strive to find those commonalities while celebrating differences and working together to forge a shared future and the futures of the next generations. Beloved, are we ready to join our voices? With the many angels surrounding the throne the thousands and thousands singing with a full voice, worthy, worthy is the lamb that is slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. We must continue to affirm, as the General Conference stated back in 2016, that the sacredness of American Indian people, their languages, cultures and gifts to the church and to the world. By supporting and celebrating Native American ministries, we begin to repair that past harm. We begin to participate in sharing Christ's love through cemetery, seminary scholarships, annual conference outreach, engaging in ministries that equip and empower Native American pastors, congregations and seminary students to authentically worship and serve Jesus with the fullness of culture and heritage. It's a blending. Native Americans have persevered in the faith through the ordeal of being removed from their native homelands 
contending with racism, and dealing with the challenges of unemployment and economic adversity. Former man killer, who was a chief of the Cherokee tribe, said, the secret of our success is that we never, never give up. The Committee on Native American Ministries in this own conference has provided funds for language re-education, tribal sovereignty issues, indigenous health care clinics, and we even supported individuals that went to Standing Rock to stand with the water protectors there. And we are also encouraging New England Conference churches this year to wear red on May 5th to honor murdered and missing indigenous women and girls. Now, throughout the time I have served on this committee, we have sought to work alongside these Native communities that are within this conference, rather than just providing funding to provide funding for something. Now, when we engage in this right relationship with God and God's creation, all of the earth responds with joy with total praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and then all that is in them singing. To the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be the blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. The one who is truly worthy of worship is not those seated in government or politics, depicted here in this scripture reading as the beast, but the one that has been crucified and rose again, Jesus, the Lamb. Hallelujah. Amen.
better than that. Let's give a hand clap of praise to God. If you know God is a good God, let me hear you say amen. Amen. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have a, a song in you this morning, let me hear you sing something. Let me hear an amen. <laughs> amen. Let me hear a God is good. God is good. If you've been moved by the word this morning, let's hear uh, a round of applause for Brother Todd once more. Union, what a gift it is that our commitment, our, our witness here in this church, in this place, is that no story goes untold. And that we are in a process, we are in a process always of unearthing that which the world tries to bury deep, deep, deep. But as the Mexican proverb says, they tried to bury us, but they didn't know we were seeds. Mm -hmm. And so here at Union, we're in the business of watering the truth of our stories so that they might grow, feed this world again, so that we might talk back to the powers that try to tell us who we are and whose we are and give them a run for their money. Amen. 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 So I'm here to tell you, as I always do, that the doors of this church are open, the virtual doors and the literal doors. If you're interested and you want to know a little bit more about this community, or if you've been coming to this community for quite some time and you want to know a little bit more about formal membership, we want you to know that the time is now to uh, log on to unionboston.org slash join so that you might have a formal conversation with us. Uh, we would love to have Union be your spiritual home. Our next membership Sunday is coming up towards the end of May. So know that if you want to be, uh, you want to call this place your home, we would love that to be possible for you. Uh, so know that that is here. Uh, as Pastor Jay comes up, we want you to remember, as always, that this is a place where your story is sacred. But not only that, where the stories of others are sacred as well. So as we draw the circle wide, ask yourself always, who isn't here? Who isn't here that needs to be considered into the fold? So we thank you, Todd, for helping to tell the story this morning. Pastor Jay. Good afternoon, Union. Good afternoon, Union. It's time for the offering. Yes, I see you clapping online. I see you raising the hand. I see you clapping in here and hear it. Uh, we rejoice because God is good and faithful and true, and God is giving uh, to us so that we might give unto others. Uh, there are four ways for you to give. We'll update this slide. The first way is that you can give online. Those of you who are online now and those of you who are in uh, the building, that's always the preferred way. It, it updates your giving record. It goes right to the bank account. It cuts out uh, the middle person, as it were. Uh, you can text to give, 84321, any dollar amount, uh, and that also works the same way. You can mail a check 
um, to the address there. And then those of you who are here who have cash or a check, as you depart today, there is an offering basket at the rear uh, that just helps so you can deposit your offering uh, today as you exit. Uh, so we are grateful for your generosity. Uh, God has truly been faithful even in the midst of all of these difficult times. Let me tell you, uh, Cynthia has been opening up the mail. Uh, we got an anonymous check this past week, $4,000. Hey, we'll take it. Uh, we're, we're, um, uh, people are, are digging deep, so uh, can keep digging deep, more to come. It's time for the offering. Blessings flow, alleluia, alleluia.
Indeed, we sing hallelujah. It is our highest praise. You may be seated. Uh, we give thanks. I would be remiss if we did not bless God one more time. Give a praise offering for Todd uh, for this wonderful leaving of the call uh, to overcome this historic amnesia as we lean into our interconnectedness as the beloved of God, as we center those most marginalized, as we pursue love, liberation, and freedom for us all. We give thanks uh, for your preach word. We give thanks for your sharing of gifts and for compelling us to think more deeply. Indeed, uh, somebody said, yes, uh, it's, it's, what did I say? Can't wait for you to come to preach at Union again soon and to listen to the sermon and, uh, and to share. Indeed, we are grateful about, for the many gifts. Listen, we come to the close of the service. There's a couple of things. We can go ahead and put the, uh, uh, the announcements on the screen. The first thing is that, yes, Easter is a season, not a day, so it is not too late for you to make your Easter gift as we continue to uh, lean in. Uh, there is a lot in store. We'll talk about it at our congregational meeting later on this month. Uh, but if you uh, have not made your Easter uh, gift, your Easter appeal, just go to unionboston.org forward slash give. Uh, these, um, yeah, the bill has come in to pay for some of this technology. Uh, so uh, I, I talked about it a couple weeks ago. Some of y'all understood, right? I see a head, a head nod. You make a purchase. Pay the good bills. for a couple of weeks, yes, and then you got to pay the bills or interest accrues. So pay the bills. The bills are now need to be paid. Uh, we joke, but we're actually serious. Uh, so uh, <laughs> make another gift. Praise the Lord, everybody. All right, May 22nd, Congregational is going to be a wonderful day, actually, May 22nd. So in three weeks, we're going to have new member Sunday and a congregational meeting. So if you have been in the wings, if you have been in conversation, with uh, Cynthia, our church administrator, or our pastor, Pastor uh, Nikki, about, uh, you know, union, wanting to go deeper, wanting to, uh, you know, to roll up your sleeves and, and join the crew, so as it were, uh, then the, the opportunity is now upon you to take your vows, to offer your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. So, um, as we do that, uh, we'll have some new members joining us. On the 22nd, uh, there is still time for you uh, to come and make your uh, intent to join. You can do it online or in person. We're excited uh, to welcome you as we extend the table, spread the table, uh, and make a table where all can be fed. So we're grateful. You'll hear from Pastor Nikki soon if you have already indicated, but um, uh, you can schedule a meeting to discuss further uh, with her or one of the members of the pastoral team. Uh, then also, note, mark your calendar, following our new members Sunday, we'll have an opportunity here in the sanctuary and online to be in conversation with the pastoral team about all the things that are, um, are in store for the remainder of the spring, the summer, and the fall. Uh, as we've relaunched internally, uh, it is now time for us to relaunch externally and connect more deeply with our neighbors in the South End and other uh, churches. So we're excited as we've um, uh, tried some new things and we've got even more in store. Our young people are coming back for those of you online. If you, uh, yes, it, we all looked over this way because our young people <laughs> are coming back from William Carter. We are grateful uh, for our young people and for their learning on today. Uh, thank you, uh, James and Stephanie, for your leadership and Michaela online. We're grateful for uh, that as well. Finally, oh yes, a seniors cookbook. Go to unionboston.org forward slash cookbook. Input your recipes. Uh, we are, 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 are passing the torch of our, some of our cherished family uh, secret recipes uh, to one another as we talk about building tables. Uh, tables are for sharing and for celebration and for eating. They are giving uh, you some, giving you some appetite. You, assurance, you, Jesus is ours. Uh, and Todd offers the benediction. Pastor Nikki uh, is coming forward to join me. And uh, where is Minister Abby? We'll invite yes. uh, Minister Abby forward. Of course, we would be remiss if we uh, did not offer a formal goodbye to our student minister. Minister Abby has been with us through one of the most challenging 
contextual education years a student can have. A contextual education happens through Boston University where seminary students who are preparing to be uh, pastors more formally uh, can come to a church site, uh, learn a little bit more, explore. And if you know anything about what Union has been like September through May, you'll know it may have been maybe not the most ideal place uh, to learn about the ins and outs of what it's like to be a pastor on a normal day. Um, and so Minister Abby has navigated Union with uh, such grace and agility during this time. Um, and we know that uh, through Bible study, Senior Lunch Club worship on Sunday, uh, you all have welcomed her with open arms. And so we'd like to give uh, Minister Abby the opportunity just to uh, be able to say goodbye, uh, share her gratitude um, before uh, we extend our uh, goodbye to you. Thank you, Pastor Nikki, so much. Um, yeah, hello. Some of you I just met for the first time today, so it feels a little <laughs> bittersweet to be saying goodbye. Um, but yeah, the semester is, is ending. Um, but I have to say uh, first just a, a huge thank you to the ministerial team and to just everybody at Union who has welcomed me and embraced this learning uh, adventure, I would call it. Uh, it's, been, it's been great. It's been um, just a wonderful learning experience. And um, as I sit among you and those of you who are online who we were together, you know, my whole first semester that way, um, I just want you to know how much it means to me deeply to have been part of this community and this family. And uh, I will be coming back, I'm sure, to visit and to just be among all of you. Um, but just know what a gift it has been to um, get to learn with you and from you. Uh, you will always be part of my journey. And those of you who I you know, haven't maybe even met, I, I don't feel like you know an end is really an end. I sort of put an ellipses on the end. So uh, I'll actually be heading back to Indiana for the summer to do my uh, chaplaincy internship, so I'm looking forward to that, but I'll be back for my last year of my, my MDiv in September, so I'm sure I will be uh, among you again, but just thank you for your welcome, for your prayers, for your music, for your ministry that you uh, continue to do in the way that you have shaped me um, and my ministry forever, so thank you just deeply for this opportunity in this year, and I'll be praying over all of you as I go on my way, so thank you. So we're not done with you. Let us <laughs> let us pray for you. So uh, let us, um, you know, stand. And as the congregation that has held Abby these last nine months or so, uh, we invite you. Uh, normally, we would all surround Abby, but in these ages, uh, we'll invite you, whether you're online or uh, here in the sanctuary, to extend a hand towards Abby uh, as we just bless her in her continuing ministry as she heads out on her way. So let us pray. Oh God, uh, who knows us and loves us, sees us and calls us, we thank you for this place called Union and for uh, the many ministries and ministers that you have called into and out of this place. Thank you for Abby and all that you have taught her through the people of Union, through this community that has been here uh, and that will continue to be here, shaping us and your gospel witness. Oh God, as Abby goes on her way, help her to remember that people who come here leave forever changed for the good and for the glory of you, oh God. We ask that you might continue to bless her, keep her, and help her to remember always that you are her God, that she is your child, and that you have led her here to this place for this reason, for such a time as this. We pray all these things in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, and let all God's people say amen. 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 This is our story. This is our song, praising our Savior all the day long. Blessed assurance this is our closing prayer.
May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope. By the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Those of you who are in the sanctuary, why don't you greet uh, ministers Todd and Abby in the rear. Uh, those of you online, the lines are unmuted. Give Todd and Abby some love. Go in peace. Hey, Senator, it's you. Hey, Abby. Praise God.